What we want to do is look at collections which are used to limit a search over a range of documents from a given source based on URL pattern. So if you want to have engineering search documents from the end server or from the support ticket server, you could set up a collection. And then when a user runs a search, there's a, just a query parameter called site that identifies which collection you're going to look in, which it's, you can think of it as a post filtering on the index. Now, to start with collections, we want to identify how they get applied. There's only one index in the GSA. That's the most efficient way for us to build our index and to store our documents. And then when a user wants to run a search, if maybe it's the support team, they want to run only a, a search on a certain portion of that index, they can. And you set up a collection, and you can have this uh, collection hidden behind that, that site parameter, behind a hidden link. So if they click on support, then a search gets, uh, a separate search gets, request gets sent over to the GSA with a site parameter set to just that collection name. And they run in their search like uh, um, release, 10.1, and then that search term goes again and hits only that index, that, that collection instead of the whole index. Here's an example of a customer that's using collections. So based on their product names, people select, a, they go to all products and they search for Dreamweaver. They run it, they click on this search, and then when they run a, or they click on this link, silently a parameter gets sent back over to the GSA with a, you know, it's a separate search request but it's an empty search, and then you, they enter in software, and they can now run against just that index. There's also links here that are providing collections behind them as well. So to create a collection, it's very simple, it's very quick, it's all on the box, it's all, no software you have to install, no big configuration wizard you have to go through. You just go to crawl an index, collections, give it a name, click create, and so import, you could also import the configuration from a file. It adds the name of the collection and then you can click edit. When you click on edit, you're given two boxes, one for including URL patterns and excluding URL patterns. So you can include content from the sales directory, from the marketing directory, but exclude stuff from the engineering directory. Collections are governed by the site parameters. So uh, there's a couple of options. One, you can go to the front end and enable it as a drop down box, which we may have seen in something similar to this in Test Center. And the, you can specify, the user can then select which collection they want to use. Now, you may want to provide a link over here that says instead of uh, Press Center, maybe you just provide a link and they click on that link and there's a hidden, it sends a, a get request to the GSA with a hidden input parameter called site parameter. You can have site set to one collection or you can have it set to multiple collections so that results have to appear in products collection and the services collection. That's the dot operation for and. The bar operation for or, so products or services, that's the union, this is the intersection. Or you can have a dash which means all any collection, except if it does not show up in the products collection, then it will show up in the search results. And you can also do logical op uh, multiple logical operations, so prices and products or services. Collections, you can think of, it's a post-index filter. It operate. you can use logical operations on it. So in some senses, it's, it can become almost as powerful as metadata, and with the benefit of not having to have good, clean metadata. That makes sense. Some notes on collections. Under crawl diagnostics, you'll see a collection name that you get to select. By default, we've been working with only default collection. So we've seen everything because in the default collection, there's a slash operator that says all content in the index gets included in the default collection. You can change the default collection. You can either change its name to hide it so that people can't go and find all the content in your index. You could uh, enter different patterns in the default. It's a good idea to still have a default collection of some name inside of your system so that you as an administrator can come down here and see all the results in the index at once under crawl diagnostics. When you select a different collection up here though, only the URLs in that collection are going to show up. 
When you drill down on a document, you can see here's the collections it's a member of, default collection or sales. There's also a default search page URL. So when, under administration setting, system settings, when a user goes to the host of the GSA and just enters the host name, then it, you've seen that it automatically goes to port 80, and guess what happens? You get a search page, and it automatically defaults, uh, defaults to the default collection and the default front end. You can specify the URL here to be a different collection if you want by default. But you'll have to specify this whole parameter string, and you'll have to make sure that you get all the required parameters in here. Site's one of them uh, for collection. You have to have a front end name, so the, the client parameter has to be set. Um, there's not too many, only about five parameters that are required. Remember them all by, and you can just do some experimenting, taking one away at a time. Oh, there they are. Uh, proxy style sheet is, uh, is, uh, is optional, so is proxy custom. Let's take a look at how we configure a collection. Let's go to crawl diagnostics first and make sure all my content is in there. Okay, so I got 497 URLs. Notice I've chosen the default collection, and on the drop down, there's no other collection. Go to collections to add one. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a subset of the documents in there. Let's make it small, not too big. Okay. These URLs have to be in the index, uh, and they have to be crawled, you know, using your crawl, start crawl pattern, your follow and crawl patterns. They have to at least have been crawled and in the index. Go to collections, we'll add sales. Or let's just call it the health, because that way there's some kind of a connotation here. Create the collection, click edit, enter in the patterns. And again, these, are, these can be regular expressions, just like any other URL pattern. I'm not going to exclude anything, but these are the only documents that will be, only documents from these paths will be included. Now, it might take a little while for collections to update. It can take up to 20 minutes to have a collection get updated. What I would do is I go back to my search page. Well, a couple things. Let's first, let's go to crawl diagnostics and see what, what we get for display of what's in the index. Now, notice that the last collection that I was on is health. None of the URLs are appearing in here yet, so the collection really hasn't been built yet. But eventually, you'll see just those two directories showing up here. If I go back to default collection, usually what will happen is you know, you'll set up a collection, and you go, you'll come back to crawl and you're going to freak out and go, where's my collection? Where's all my data? Oh, it's all gone. And you go back to default collection, it's still there. Run a search, and find my, if I run a search on health, right, I get my results because I'm using the default collection. Where's the site parameter? It's right here, site equals default collection. Now if I run a, if I change this to sales, oh, I called it health. Okay, great. Okay. That's what happens if I enter in a, a bog uh, incorrect uh, collection name. Let's see here. So at least I don't get a 500 error, but unfortunately I don't get some kind of an error saying, oh, I'm using a collection that doesn't exist. Name it health. Okay, I don't get any search results. Give it about 20 minutes. Come back. Check it. You should see some results then. All right, any questions on collections? You can define as many as you want. If you define too many complex queries with uh, uh, very complex collection searching, I, don't, I think eventually it'll start to impact performance. But you might have to do some testing. And it, it'll be specific to how many documents you have in your index and so on. Yeah. So the question was, if you have an include pattern that's very general, and then an exclude pattern under that directory, and then under that directory, you have another include pattern to include just a sub sub directory. Will it work? And I think I think the answer is it will. Oh, setting up a collection based on metadata. No, collections only work off a URL source. 
But what you can do is, um, if you have your documents, I was using an example, like if you had your documents into different directories based on, um, based on uh, logical uh, search criteria, like maybe all the product sheets in one side of, in a product directory and all the HR documents in another HR directory, then you could conceivably um, use collections in lieu of metadata search because you can have logical operators like ands and ors on the collections. But that's your 